Hello, my name is Dr. Ominde. We're going to discuss the liver, spleen, pancreas, duodenum in the next lecture series. So, um, the outline of this lecture is as follows. So, we'll say anatomy of the liver. So, you expected to know the location, gradations and surfaces, blood supply and venous drainage, and applied anatomy. Then, there's the anatomy of the spleen. Then, we'll discuss the anatomy of the pancreas and the duodenum. So we start with the liver. The liver is conchept and it's a, it's a reddish brown organ located in the right hypochondrium. So it's a conchept reddish brown um, organ located in the hypochondrium of the abdomen. And the relations of the liver superiorly you have the diaphragm, anterior to the liver you have the cage, and posteriorly you have the inferior vena cava and the diaphragm. So the liver has two surfaces it has a diaphragmatic surface and a visceral surface. So the diaphragmatic surface is where you find diaphragm and the visceral surface you have various viscera that uh, form relations of the liver. So you have the gallbladder, the stomach, the duodenum, hepatic flexure of the colon and the right kidney. So they form the visceral relations of the liver. So this is what we are discussing. This is the liver is the right lobe, left lobe, they are separated by a falciform ligament. Above here you have the coronary ligament and the inferior of the falciform ligament is the ligamentum teres so these are the diaphragmatic surfaces of the liver this is where the dam uh, rests upper and the posterior point and this is the visceral face you can see the bladder forms part of the visceral region of the liver so you can again appreciate we have part of the duodenum as a visceral relation of the liver and you can appreciate also how the gallbladder through the cystic duct drains and the cystic duct will drain the bile to come and join the comal duct and comal bile duct drains the pancreatic duct at the ampulla of vata in the second part of the duodenum so we'll go into much more detail about that so this are the this image just shows you the relations visceral relations of the liver so remember this is your lobe and the right lobe yeah then this is mark, so it grooves the liver. We also have part of the duodenum group grooving the liver and the gallbladder. So you have falciform ligament that separates right from the lobe, and bile is produced in the liver. It will be stored in the gallbladder. So hepatocytes produce bile through biliary canaliae. In the left lobe, the glibula will be drained by the left hepatic duct, and in the right lobe, the capilla are drained by the right hepatic duct. Right and left hepatic ducts fuse to form common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct is made by cystic ducts from the gallbladder and together they form the common bile duct. Common bile duct is joined by the pancreatic ducts containing secretions of the exocrine pancreas. Together, common bile duct pancreatic ducts open at the elevator located on the posterior medial margin of the second of the duodenum. So this shows you the visceral surface of the liver and the structures that move it. Then you can also appreciate the ligament the liver. So inferior vena is here and the gallbladder. Then you have the right lobe of the liver and the left lobe. But on the posterior aspect, you can appreciate the caudate um, lobe and the caudate lobe. So the liver has four lobes, right, left lobe. But we also have the caudate and the caudate lobe. So caudate is uh, superior close to the inferior vena cover, while caudate is close to the bladder. So this is the gallbladder and its cystic duct. Okay, this is the porta hepatis. It's the entrance of neurovascular structures to the liver, and usually we have a total triad in the portal hepatis. The portal triad is made up of the common bile, hepatic vein, and hepatic artery proper. So those form the portal to the porta hepatis, common bile duct, portal vein, and hepatic artery proper. Then the ligaments of the liver you can appreciate a left triangular ligament here. Then you have your coronal ligament sitting here and the right triangular ligament on this lower margin. So you can see it's triangular portion. So right triangular, left triangular ligament, and this is a coronary ligament. Now, remember you have veins from the liver that drain into the inferior vena cover so that the blood can go to the heart. So you have your hepatic veins from the different. Okay. This is ligamentum teres. So you have ligamentum teres left triangular triangular and coronary ligaments then you have four lobes right lobe left lobe caudate and caudate so this 
ligamentum teres, the one that hangs on inferior my hair. So this is the anatomy of the liver. So you have the um, veins from the right lobe, right hepatic vein, vein from the left lobe, the left hepatic vein, and veins from the caudatal lobe through the middle uh, hepatic vein. Together, the three of them point to the inferior vena cava. But this is your left, this is your right lobe. You can appreciate caudate and caudate lobes on the visceral towards the visceral surface. Again, we said bile is produced patrocytes through hepatic ducts, left hepatic and right hepatic ducts. The two ducts will join to form a hepatic duct. Hepatic duct will be joined by cystic duct to form common bile. Common bile duct will be joined by pancreatic duct at the ampulla of vata on the second part of the genome that's where they open and at the porta hepatis where we said you have portal triad where you portal vein hepatic artery and common bile duct so these are the portal triads so what's the blood supply to the liver you have two sources of blood like one hepatic artery that is bringing oxygenated blood and portal veins bringing blood with absorbed nutrients from the GIT. so the hepatic artery is a branch of uh, coming from one hepatic artery. Remember we said common hepatic artery is filiac trunk. After giving gastroduodenal, it becomes hepatic artery pro, which will give right gastric artery and finally divide into left and right hepatic artery. This common hepatic or hepatic artery proper divides into right left hepatic artery to different lobes, right left lobes. This is the source of oxygenated arterial blood to the liver. Portal vein, on the other hand, still brings blood to the liver, and this is blood with absorbed nutrients from the intestines. So it carries venous blood for processing of digestive products in the liver. And the liver is drained by inferior cover. Remember we said you have middle, right, and left hepatic uh, veins that open into the inferior vena cover. So this shows you where the stomach, the liver, is the gland, the cystic duct. You have your common hepatic ducts, right and left. Sorry, left and right hepatic ducts forming common hepatic that will be joined by cystic to form common bile together with pancreatic ducts open at the ampulla of on the second part of the duodenum. That's how bile flows. So this is the liver here. This is your cystic duct. This is pancreatic duct. That's the crease. So this we have discussed how the how bile flows. So bile is formed in the liver by the hepatocytes. Then through biliary canalicula, they are drained from the different lobes of the through right and left hepatic ducts. These two ducts unite to form common hepatic duct. Common hepatic is joined by cystic duct from common bile duct. And common bile duct joins pancreatic duct at the pillow of vata and open in the second part, the posterior part, second part of the duodenum. So what are the applied anatomy aspects of the liver? So remember, the uh, liver is on the right side of the abdomen. So it tends to make the right diaphragm to appear higher than the left hemidiaphragm, and that's very important. Two, we have what you call the foramen of Winslow. Okay, this foramen of Winslow is um, opening into the lesser um, um, omentum, and this foramen of Winslow is where hepatic artery can be compressed, what you call Pringles maneuver. So surgically you compress the hepatic artery in this foramen of Winslow. Then we have chronic liver disease conditions such as cirrhosis, which is fibrosis, and these conditions lead to high pressure within the portal vein, which we call portal hypertension. And portal hypertension is characterized by varices in the size of potocystic anastomosis, just the lower part of the esophagus where you get esophageal varices. So in the next lectures, we'll discuss the spleen.